Welcome back to part four of this stained glass bat series. You'll find links for parts one through three in the description below. Today we're starting with making the little spider. So here I'm showing you that I have ground the edges of two little glass globs. You want to make sure that one is slightly larger than the other so that you have one bead for the body and one for the head. And in this case, these are little fused glass globs that I made in my own kiln with just some black uh, COE 96 glass. Then you wrap each piece in foil as you normally would. Now, the reason I'm showing this to you is because I would like to show you a very, very simple way to actually burnish these little beads. So you saw that I placed the foil around the first one and kind of crimped it down with my fingers, but I didn't actually burnish anything. And that's because I'm gonna show you how to do this, uh, as I mentioned, very simply, and it's, we're going to use a little box to do it. So the edges are crimped down to make sure that the foil doesn't slip forward or backward. And you can see it's still really rough. It, there's a lot of crinkles and, and creases in there that we really wanna get rid of before we do any soldering to it. So this is a little box that I keep for this purpose and you'll want to make sure that you've got more than just the two beads in there because you're going to start you're going to close this up and shake it around and those little pieces are going to clang around into each other and through that motion um, the foil is going to shrink down nice and tight around that little blob of glass so the more little beads that you have in there the better because uh, that will help with burnishing the foil down so you can see just after a few seconds of shaking it, it is better, but it's not quite done yet because the pieces aren't perfectly smooth to the glass. So we'll close it up and shake that around a little bit more. Now with this little box, I keep this as a handy little tool in my studio. You can see there's solder marks all over the outside of it. I use this to help me prop things up when I'm soldering, if I'm doing something three-dimensional. And like I say, I always keep extra beads in it because this is my go-to little tool, basically, for burnishing little glass globs or blobs, whatever you want to call them. So having shaken that around a little bit more, you can see that they are now perfectly smooth. That burnishing was very, very simple. And in all honesty, I think I get a better finish on them when I burnish them this way than if I try to use a little fid and flatten them out myself. So now I'm just coming in with a tiny little utility knife or a craft knife and cleaning off the tips and tails of where the starts and finishes were of the foil. On a flat piece of glass, it's much easier to make them line up properly. On the little blobs, I have a hard time with it. So I usually always have some little pieces that stick out. So I just trim them back so that you get a nice smooth line of foil around the edge. So now I'm prepping some copper wire. This is actually an 18 gauge bare copper wire. And I'll put a link in the description below if you uh, have trouble finding any. Now this, I do actually have a another video that I'll link here for you that shows you how to do the tinning of the copper wire. That's what I'm doing right now. So I cleaned it off with some emery cloth, added flux for the full length of it, and now I'm just tinning it. I do find that if you're going to be tinning wire, try and tin it on the spool, or at least use a very long length that you can hold in a pair of pliers. If you were to cut this down to start with and have smaller pieces, that are two to three inches long, it's a much more tedious process to tin them. So this wire is going to be used for the legs of our spider. So we need four pieces, and these were roughly cut to about two and a half, three inches. And so a little bit of flux and adding the solder around the spider body and head for the front and the back. And then we'll get to work on adding these little legs. So you wanna make sure that you've got a decent amount of solder around the edges because um, the solder is gonna to have to flow down and connect to those little wires that we're gonna to add to the underside of the spider body. So you're gonna notice this is gonna get very hot very quickly. So using some pliers to help you uh, to be able to pick it up and move it around is going to be very, very handy. And once you're ready to start adding the wires, we're going to be working from the bottom side. So you'll see I just flipped that spider over so that I'm working on the flat area on the bottom. And we're just going to 
try to space these wires out fairly evenly, but they're going on rather randomly really. And using the pliers holding the wire, you're going to attach one edge by letting a piece of solder drip down and connect to the soldered edge of the body. Now here I realized I didn't get it quite centered, so I'm just gonna start over with this. Now this is going to be a little bit finicky for most, I'm sure, just because it is a very small project um, that requires a lot of finicky additions of these little wires. So don't get discouraged, just sort of stick at it. And if you need to, you can kind of bend the wire into different shapes to help make sure that you're getting the connection or the contact with the areas of the solder that you need. Now, because this video was recorded uh, quite a few months ago now, I forgot that I had made those little wires too short the first time. So you wanna make sure that you're very generous in the length that you're using for the piece of wire. These ones were probably closer to three three and a half inches in length. And you can always trim off the excess after, but having them long enough is going to make life a little bit easier for you. So I basically repeated the same process off screen uh, for tinning the wire and then cutting it into new sections. So here you can see me attaching it onto the spider. And you may notice that there is a bit of a curve in these. And what I'm doing is using that curve to help make sure that the wire kind of wraps down toward the table a little bit so that I get a good connection with the solder that is around the edge of the glass bead. And that's how these wires are attached is just by adding a little bit of connecting solder to make the two pieces meld into one. a bare little piece of wire right there so I just had to add a little bit more tinning to it just to make sure it was all covered. The reason that I want to make sure that everything is covered with solder and not left copper is because I plan on adding patina to this in the end and I want to make it all black. So if you don't put patina, sorry, if you don't put copper, no, <laughs> if you don't put solder onto the copper wire, um, when you go to add the patina, it's going to have different tones to it because the copper won't take the black patina uh, nearly as well as the solder does. So now, again, because this little sucker is getting quite hot, I'm using my pliers to hold on to it. And I'm just cleaning up the edges because when I was attaching the wires, I was just adding the solder and blobbing it on there to make sure everything was connected. Now I'm trying to go in and clean it up and make sure that it's a little bit more smooth looking around the outside so that where the legs attach, it doesn't look really bumpy and strange. So take your time with this and clean it up as best you can. And now you can see I'm trimming the wires. And you wanna make sure that you have a long enough length left when you're done so that you can bend them the way I'm going to show you here. So here's our little spider dude <laughs> with flat legs and we're gonna start bending each leg individually. And you start by bending it upward. And that's going to allow us to create the knee, I suppose, in the wire so that it bends back down toward the floor. And it's gonna give you a really cute little spidery effect. And these little guys can actually stand on their own. If we weren't suspending this onto a sun catcher, we could actually stand it on the table. So now that all those legs are bent upwards, we're gonna start bending them back down. And I tend to do this about halfway through the wire. And our focus has gone a little bit here, but it will come back. 
and you can see I'm just bending this with my fingers because it's an 18 gauge wire it's still very easily manipulated with your hands you don't have to use pliers and so that's one side and then you're going to repeat that for the other side as well so you do want to make sure that when you trim your wires that the legs on both sides are roughly the same length that way your spider will stand evenly if it is one that you're creating to just stand on a tabletop somewhere and so now we have our little spider isn't he cute <laughs> i love these little guys i think they're just so sweet they look realistic enough but they're not creepy kind of spiders so i think they're cute so we're going to get another little angle here so that you can see what it looks like sort of sitting on the table. And with it patinaed all black, that silvery sheen that you've got that really kind of draws the eye is going to disappear and you're just going to have this little black spider. So it'll be a nice little addition to the bat. This was something that I just decided I wanted to add an extra element to the bat. And so now, because it's going to be attached to the sun catcher, I'm just adding a little jump ring to the front of it so that you can string it to the bat. Now, in the last video, I alluded to the fact that I changed my mind on a couple of things. Now, as much as I wanted to have black patina on this bat, I did discover that having done the spider web itself in silver, um, that black, the black lines, it didn't really work. It didn't look like a spider web anymore. So I decided I would try and clean the black patina off. Now there are a couple of ways that you can do this. I'm using an emery cloth. You could use an emery cloth or a steel wool. They're basically the same, but I found I was being very gingerly with, about it right along the paint areas and I wasn't getting it nice and clean because I was afraid of scraping the paint off the glass. In all honesty, I'm not sure if it would scrape the paint off the glass, but I didn't want to damage it. So I opted for my fallback, which is to just re-solder those lines. So I just added some flux back on there. And you'll see that uh, by going over that with the soldering iron and basically just melting the solder again, all that black patina disappears. So I start with the one that's already kind of silver because I scraped it off with the emery cloth. But you can see it's a much more clean silver look. And then now, the second one, that one was black when I started adding the soldering iron to it. And you can see how nice and silvery it comes back up. So I'm just going back in, adding a touch more solder just to clean them up and make them look perfectly smooth the way I want. And then I can clean that flux back off. So if you've ever wondered, because um, I know I've gotten this question multiple times by email on my blog, uh, where people are asking, I've already patinaed something a certain color and I don't like it. Can I change it? Well, yes, you can. It does take a little bit more work to do that. So it's best to decide up front what, how you want to do it. But in this case, it was just a small little area. So I really didn't mind doing it. If it meant that I had to re-solder the whole bat, I may have reconsidered the whole thing. But because it was just those two lines and I find it really does help make that spider web kind of blend together much better now. So after having cleaned it, I'm going to polish it. And <laughs> this project, I gotta say, I don't think I've ever backstepped so many times in a project as this particular one, because I was creating it on the fly and I was just kind of working at it and then changing my mind about things and going back and repeating different steps. So I am polishing it now, but I am gonna go back and change something else, uh, which we'll get to shortly. But for the polish itself, I use the ChemPro stained glass uh, finishing compound, which I'll link in the description below. And uh, you can see me applying it here. It's, it's a whitish liquid and I just use a rag that is dedicated to polishing. And I just spread it around all over the metal areas, anywhere there's solder. And I don't worry about coating all of the glass, but if it coats the glass, it's not an issue at all. And so you can see I'm just kind of smearing it around and making sure I've got good coverage everywhere. And I did the edges specifically too. You'll notice that I did the front and then the back and then the outside edges, because if you overlook the outside edges, they will look rather dull later. So here I'm reconsidering my next step. I decided that the spider, originally I put the hook to hang the spider on the left wing, 
away from the spider web. But then looking at it and playing with it, I decided mm, it's not quite what I want. So I'm taking that hook back off <laughs> and I'm going to move it to the other side. And I'm going to have it so that the spider is actually climbing straight up toward the spider web instead of having to crawl across the back. So all I did was add a little bit of flux to that area where that hook was and uh, remove that. And now I'm just going to add it back to the bottom of this seam here where the spider web is. And so I did add the polish as you saw, and then now I'm doing this. So anytime you want to go back and, and solder again, you can do that at any time, but you just need to make sure that you're adding the flux or you're going to really struggle with what you're trying to do. So with that hook moved, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up uh, the two points, uh, where I, one where I took it off, and I think I go back and touch up where I added the jump ring as well. And that's just to smooth the solder back out so that I can go back and patina it one more time <laughs> and make sure that everything blends in properly. So the hook is nice and solid, but I'm just going to touch the iron in a couple of spots just to help get rid of the lumpy blobs of solder that are there. Okay, so soldering for the third time is done. So we come back in with a little bit of cleaner. Now, because I was picking the project up and I had flux on my gloves, I always wipe down the whole project again, just because I don't want that flux sitting on there because it will cause that white corrosion uh, or white mold as we call it, but it's not really mold uh, on the solder seams. So cleaning it off well, making sure that all the chemical is removed Going back to the polishing stage, I ended up off camera adding more polish again because I'd wiped it all off. And so with the polish all applied and allowing it to dry, you can see it turns very white and hazy. You can see on the left there before I wipe it down, it gets really, it's really, really white and dusty looking. And so that is going to help make sure everything is nice and shiny for you. And I use uh, another rag basically to wipe it back off but then around those seams see how it's there's still a lot of white sort of caked in those seams I like to use this is a little nail brush that I bought at the dollar store I think and uh, it's nice and stiff and it's but it's plastic bristles so it's not going to hurt anything and so I just use that to kind of scrub along all those solder lines so that I can get that build up of that white polish that's caked in those edges get it all out and make sure that it's all perfectly clean and you'll notice that using a, different types of brushes will help give your solder a lot more shine as well so you can see I'm not being gingerly over the paint here um, using that nail brush like I said it's a soft uh, it's a sturdy soft plastic bristle on it it doesn't affect the paint at all now, if you don't have a, any fancy little brushes like that, you can always use a toothbrush. Uh, it's a smaller coverage though, so it'll take you a little bit longer to do it, but that's what I often, I, I always have my nail brush and a toothbrush in my little bin that I use for holding all my polishing equipment or, and stuff. And it's very handy for certain things, especially when you're working in three dimension. It's, you do want to have something small like that for a larger project or even a decent sized sun catcher like this one, the nail brush is perfect size I find for what I'm doing. So not much left to this a little bit more cleanup. Now I don't actually show you how I add the chain for the bat to the spider but it really is just a piece of chain with two little jump rings and I connect it to the loops one on the wing and one on the the spider and that's how it gets connected and it hangs there beautifully. So this was a fun project and uh, as I said in the first video the pattern is available in my Etsy shop and the, um, the pattern is for the bat and it doesn't have the lines for the 
spider web or anything like that. That was something that I decided to do to dress up that pattern because I thought the bat was cute, but I wanted to do something a little bit more with it. So get creative with your projects and feel free to add paint or add little extras like this little tiny spider and have fun with your designs and make them your own. Even if you're buying a pattern or using a free pattern from online somewhere, just get creative, have fun and make it your own. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.